I, I really enjoyed uh, as best as you can for these types of stories. Uh, your column from last week, Mark, on Rocky Words, uh, a longtime figure for Chicago. Uh, we know he brought them out of a dead period with regards to the franchise, but we all know uh, with his handling of the Kyle Beach situation is what's going to resonate for a ton of people. And I think you did a great job of discussing his legacy uh, in your column, Rocky Wirtz legacy framed by Blackhawks highest and lowest moments. Uh, he passed away last week at the age of 70. Uh, it is expected that his son, uh, Danny Wirtz will succeed him as owner. That has not been out there confirmed yet, but have, there have been uh, some rumblings about that, but I did want to spend a couple minutes just talking about your column and also talking about that particular new story, Mark. I, I just would like to know just to start, what, were, what was your initial reaction when you heard Rocky Wirtz had passed away? I, I was shocked. I mean, you know, he's, he's still a relatively young man at 70 years old and he had still been around a lot. I mean, uh, you, you just, you, you never know with these things, but it wasn't like something that was like, we didn't know about an illness and extended illness or anything like that. It kind of came out of nowhere as these things, unfortunately often do. Um, but it's huge. I mean, Rocky words, look, look, as, as I wrote, there's, he has, his legacy was, was complicated by the last few years, by the Kyle beach situation, which, you know, the Jenner and block report cleared him of knowing about, but you know, it's your franchise, it's your business, right? When something happens under your watch, the buck stops there, right? So there's something to that. Then there's the whole town hall tirade, all that, which is a whole separate thing. Um, but this was one of the most, this is a Titan in Chicago sports, a Titan in the NHL. I mean, Rocky Wirtz, since he took over the team from his father in 2007, uh, he put the Blackhawks back on the map. I mean, nobody gave a crap about the Blackhawks anymore. They were in 2004, ESPN did a list of all the pro teams in all the pro sports and uh, by their basically their basic levels of competence. And the Blackhawks were the worst professional franchise in all of professional sports in North America, like 204th or whatever it was. Like it was bad. Like it was a joke of a franchise. The home games weren't on TV. There were 5,000 people in the stands. Now things were starting to turn on a little bit because that was, you know, Rocky came in on Kane and Taves' rookie year. So there was some excitement building. But, mm -hmm. you know, Rocky did all the things that his father, Dollar Bill Words, wouldn't do. He poured money into the. He, I mean, he, he, he's a billionaire. His family is like a, the beverage kings of Chicago, the multi billion dollar business. And he poured money into the team. He made the Blackhawks a, a destination franchise for free agents. People wanted to work here, people wanted to play here, and people wanted to watch them play. And Rocky Words did all that by opening up the coffers. He was the ideal owner. You know, he was every every team in Chicago was jealous of the of Rocky Words. Like if you were a Cubs fan and you have to deal with the Ricketts or you were uh, a Bears fan, you have to deal with the McCaskies. You were jealous that Rocky Words. He or if you're a Sox fan or Bulls fan with Jerry Reinsdorf. Like these were these are let's just say divisive owners at best. Everybody loved Rocky. Everybody, and he earned it. Like you know, he made this team great. And he just never stopped spending money, which is all you care about as an owner, right? Sign those checks, put smart people in charge, and then sign those checks. And he did that. The last few years made everything different. I mean, you can't. I I, I know I know a lot of people were mad at me for have for writing that column mere hours after we we learned about his death. But you know, it's journalism. There's no such thing as too soon. You know, our job is to tell the truth, and the truth about Rocky Wirtz is he was a great hockey owner who had a huge huge stain on his resume and you can't just pretend that didn't happen it's two things can be true yeah i, I it just it's kind of interesting that when, it, when i think of the eugene melnick passing yeah. from last year uh as an owner who obviously was at the forefront of the ottawa senators but a very complicated legacy in in his own right especially it was very top of mind for me when i was reading the column and, and just processing the story because yes this person may have done good things but i i don't think it's wrong to write about how complicated a legacy for a person is when they kind of blend the line between good and bad and in this situation and i understand it's one bad situation and a town hall when you really boil it down but especially for people who are not in the market of chicago like i know for me as someone who is not as well versed on chicago sports as you are mark I my thinking of Rocky Wirtz is the town hall where you are trying to ask him a question and you're going back and forth with him on the Kyle Beach situation. And he's saying, we're not going to talk about it. It's it's a it's a it's a big stain on that organization. It's something that they have to deal with. It's something that they will have to deal with and, and try to, you know, move on from for a long time. 
essentially. Well, yeah, we're not pe- done discussing that situation. That's just it. People, people are always telling, yelling at Scott Powers and I to move on from Kyle Beach, but you don't just move on from that. That's going to, you know, Danny works himself. When when Scott and I talked to him and, and uh, President of Business Operations Jamie Faulkner at the one year anniversary of the Jenner and Block Report last October, uh, they Danny Wirtz himself said the memory of what happened to Kyle Beach colors literally everything they do in the organization. Like he 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 is in their minds with every step they take every hire they make every decision they make you know they're doing it with kyle beach and that legacy in mind of how do we make sure something like that doesn't happen again so it it it, it, it does continue to be an issue here and danny taking over you know he, that's going to continue to be the the thing and you know i i, I wrote this in the column I, I don't think people realize how the perception of rocky words and the blackhawks in general changed around the league in the last couple of years because of this um, when, you know, the day after the outburst, it was, it was all-star weekend. Oh, well, right. I, I went straight from that night game against the wild to Vegas for the all-star game. Um, after he said, we're not talking about Kyle beach, you know, it's he basically, basically was saying I'm a billionaire and I paid this guy off. And now we get to, everyone gets to shut up. Uh, and, and, and that's what that tirade was. Um, I had three perspectives. They were still looking for a GM because Stan Bowman, you know, I had three prospective GMs, like viable candidates, not like, you know, far flung, like nobody's viable candidates reach out to me. And, you know, I'm not that I'm not, I'm not Mike Russo. These guys don't usually reach out to me about things like this. They came out to me and asked me, you know, they, they, they expressed to me that they had serious misgivings about applying for that job basically now, because they weren't sure they wanted to work under someone who could say things like that. So it changes the perception dramatically of the entire franchise. It does matter. It's not just the one-off thing that we can all forget. It colors everything the Blackhawks are doing going forward, hopefully for the better, right? Like you're going to learn something from this. It could have a positive legacy in the end. So it colors everything the Blackhawks are doing and it colors the way people who are considering working for the Blackhawks think of these things too. Remember what Wayne Gretzky said that night on the TNT panel. He said, if I had a 17-year-old kid right now, I'd be really thinking hard about whether I would want them to be drafted by this organization because this is how they care about people. So it's it's short-sighted and naive and foolish to say, let's just move on. Because the Blackhawks haven't moved on, the hockey world hasn't moved on, and you know, no, neither of us should. No, they shouldn't be moving on because if this is going to have any long-term positive effect, it's going to be because we remember it, not because we forget it. Absolutely. That's very well said. What have you made of how fans and readers have been processing uh, Wurtz's passing and juggling with the fact that you know, he played, not played a role, but he, his reaction to the town hall and everything else we mentioned with regards to Cal Beach is being processed. But at the same time, this is an, organiz- an organization that has seen three Stanley Cups, some of the best players in franchise history, and Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane flourish in the Rocky Wirtz era. Yeah. Uh, again, just the fact you could be able to watch them on TV and not go through the uh, dated practices of, of Bill Wirtz. Like, there, there is good in that era Oh, that it's the, it's the, the best time ever to be the, a Blackhawks fan. Absolutely. It was the golden age of Blackhawks hockey was Rocky Wirtz's ownership. And fans have been trying to, you know, remind people online, especially that these things happen. Like this is something that people shouldn't forget about Rocky Wirtz. What have, what have been your impressions of how people have been trying to juggle both of those things? I mean, most of what you read in, uh, you know, other outlets and most of what you see on online is people are, are you know, they're mourning him. And he he was like, he was a big figure in a lot of people's lives as a sports fan. And he did a lot of good things. And I think people have a tendency to focus on the positive, especially in the immediate aftermath of a death. Nobody wants to dance on anyone's grave. And, you know, you know, that's not what I was doing. I was right. You know, I wasn't writing a eulogy. I was writing a legacy story. There's a difference there. But as a fan, you don't have to do that. You can just, you know, pre- go oh my god this guy helped give me the best sports fan moments of my life just like there's fans that are still grappling with whether they can look back at 2010 fondly 2010 was probably the best time ever to be a blackhawks fan first Stanley cup in 49 years a young exciting team everybody loved everybody on that team some fans have complicated feelings toward that team and some fans just say no i I can separate the two things so i think you see a lot of that kind of cognitive dissonance where a lot of people are just mourning him it's 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 not the same as it was when bill words died uh, when Bill Wards died in 2007, they had like on opening night, like a moment of silence for him and people booed lustily. Bill Wards was despised in this city. He was the guy that ruined Bill Wards is a monster, huge figure in the history of hockey, like an important guy. Arthur and Bill Wards helped make the NHL. But in Chicago, he was reviled because of what he had done, because he was so cheap, because the team, the games weren't on TV. He had basically destroyed hockey in this town. 
So, I mean, it was, it was unseemly, but it was, it was honest emotion from Blackhawks fans. When Bill Wirtz died, people were glad. It was kind of gross, but it's undeniable that people were clearly, Blackhawks fans were excited that maybe things could be different. That's not the case now. Nobody's like, hooray, Rocky Wirtz died. Uh, it's not to that degree. But there are people that are just lamenting the loss of a very important figure in Chicago sports. And there are people that are trying to grapple with how do you process a legacy that's this complicated. If it comes out uh, that uh, Rocky's son, Danny, uh, will in fact succeed him as owner, just based on how you've you've dealt with him in the past and what he's done in his role, what could Hawks fans expect if he becomes owner and succeeds? Let's 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 and succeeds his father. Let's try to. I know it's a bit of a hypothetical. Maybe it's entirely possible. By the time you hear this episode, uh, it is announced. It is the case. But if it gets to that point, what can fans expect? Yeah, I mean, we all expect. You know, we've all always expected it was going to be Danny. Although it's interesting when 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 Bill died, everybody thought it was going to be Peter Worst that took over, and then Rocky came out of nowhere and got it. So you never know with these things. But yeah, we're fully expecting Bill. Danny Wirtz has been with the team now since uh, uh, John McDonough was fired in April of 2020. And Danny Wirtz has basically been in charge since then. So he's now he's, he's become entrenched in the hockey run side. So we're all expecting he'll be the owner. Um, the, 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 I guess the most important thing, if you're a Hawks fan, is he's not going to turn off the money tap. He has seen that you got to spend money to make money in the NHL. He's not going to all of a sudden, you know, take games off of TV and, uh, and, and start spending, you know, I'm I mean, obviously the Hawks aren't a cap team right now, but that's by design. That's a strategic move, not a cheap move. So um, that's not going to change. He's going to continue what Rocky did in that regard. Uh, the exciting thing for, for if you're a Hawks fan with a conscience is Danny Wirtz seems like a really good guy. I mean, I honestly mean that. He's a young guy. He's only 46 years old. He's very forward thinking. I mean, he's a he's a billionaire business guy. I mean, let's not pretend he's like, you know, Mother Teresa here. He's still he's from that world. He's from that world of succession, but he's not exactly uh, Logan Roy either. You know, he mm -hmm. cares about people. He cares about making the Blackhawks a, a better organization. He's done a lot of these. He said, let me put it this way. He said he and Jamie Faulkner have said all the right things when it comes to inclusion, when it comes to empowering players to speak up, when it comes to fostering a more uh, welcoming environment. Uh, the hires they've made have, have underscored that Kyle Davidson, Luke Richardson. These are young forward thinking people too. Um, it takes years to make a, to actually affect a culture change. So we don't know what the long-term results are going to be yet, but I think and there's been missteps. The Pride Night was a debacle, an absolute debacle. And Danny didn't speak that night. I requested him like half a dozen times, and he didn't speak. Connor Murphy had to speak for the team that night. It's the same shit that happened when the Jenner and Block Report came out, and Jeremy Colleton and Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze had to speak for the team. It should not have been that way. It should have been someone in management and ownership, and it wasn't. And that's a bad way of doing business, and I think the Hawks have to learn that. But... I do, but Danny Wirtz was at the Pride Parade this year. I mean, Danny Wirtz cares about these things. I really do believe his heart is in the right place. I think that as the owner of the Chicago Blackhawks, you hold a lot of power in the NHL if you choose to wield it. Rocky chose to wield it. Like you're like Jeremy Jacobs. You're like at that level. You're, a, you're an original six, big market, big money owner. You can wield a lot of power. And if Danny Wirtz wants to put his foot down and really – make a make, make a stand for things i think he can affect positive change it's difficult to do in a glacial business like this but i think he could be a force for good i really do if he chooses to be who knows he might go back he might just be a, a, a dial it back as owner and not be the ceo anymore he might go back to the beverage business and just sign the checks kind of like what rocky was doing but if he wants to be he can be a really positive force for good in a very old man sport i mean he's only 46 like he's only three years older than i am uh, I feel like he could be a, a, he could do a lot of good in the NHL if he chooses to do that. Anything else you want to mention with regards to the Rocky Ward situation that I didn't ask you before we move on and we try to make the show a little bit more fun? You're not having fun? <laughs> oh, of course I'm having fun. It just we know we try to. You know what? I, 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 I want to say something nice can. about. I I I, I want to. I'll say something nice about Rocky Ward here. He okay. was, you know. He was a businessman and he was a billionaire. And just on principle, I'm not really a big fan of billionaires existing. It's kind of immoral to me, but uh, he did Are a lot of good. Are you one of those people who would want to eat billionaires? Eat the rich, baby. 
there shouldn't be there shouldn't be that much wealth disparity in the world is all i'm saying yeah, that's true but um he did a lot of good i mean i i worked at the chicago sun times and he was one of the people that basically saved the sun times by investing in local journalism when we were on the verge of bankruptcy or, or, or folding he did a lot of philanthropic work he did so much good he built the community rinks in the in the city chicago hockey is better because of him and the city of chicago in a lot of ways is better because of him all of that is true and you that can be true and you can still talk about the other things without it being disrespectful we're all adults here and we can have these conversations. That's all I wanted to say.